Hey everybody, one that always bored, never boring. Today is a very exciting day because for the first time on my channel, I am playing Space Crusade Eldar Attack. The Eldar Attack expansion is something I never owned as a child. I was very, very happy to pick up a copy last year. And now we have our first official playthrough. Being as this is the first time I've played this expansion on camera, there may well be a few mistakes, especially some tactical errors on my part, but we will see what we can do. Eldar Attack is primarily for two players. You have one squad of Eldars and they are duking it out with the alien player. An Eldar squad comprises 10 miniatures. You have the Exarch and then you have nine Eldar warriors. For this particular mission, I have six warriors with shuriken catapults. They move seven squares, attack at range with two white dice, attack in hand-to-hand -hand with three white dice, and have an armor class of two. I have one warrior with a shuriken cannon. They move three squares, have an armor class of two, and attack in hand-to-hand -hand with two white dice. On their turn, they can fire the cannon up to three times, rolling one red dice and one white dice. These attacks can be divided up before and after moving. I have one warrior with a las cannon. They move three squares, have an armor class of two, and attack in hand-to-hand -hand with two white dice. When they fire the las cannon, they take two shots, which roll one red dice and target everything in an area of four squares. Alternatively, they can concentrate their fire, only taking one shot but rolling two red dice instead. If they take multiple shots, they must both be taken either before or after moving. I have one warrior with a missile launcher. They move three squares, have an armor class of two, and attack in hand-to-hand -hand with two white dice. The missile launcher targets one square for two red dice. The eight surrounding squares are hit for the value of the highest of those two dice rolled. For example, if you roll a two and a three, the center square is hit for five, and the surrounding squares are hit for three. Finally, I have my leader, the mighty Exarch. They move seven squares and have an armor class of two. They attack in hand-to-hand -hand with three white dice, and they attack at range with two white dice. But they get to take two shots, which they can divide up before and after moving. In addition to our weapon loadouts, we also have some equipment. I have equipped all six of my shuriken catapults with explosive shuriken, which allows me to roll one extra light weapons dice when firing. Additionally, all of my shuriken catapults have runes of guidance, which allows me to re-roll one white dice every time I shoot with them. As my shuriken cannon can shoot three times per turn, I have also equipped that with the runes of guidance, so I get a re-roll there as well. Finally, I am taking the Warlock's Warning. I can use this card once per mission. It will allow me to negate any damage against one Eldar warrior. I also get one Order card. I have taken Psychic Attack. Your squad may launch a mental assault against the forces of chaos. No Gretchen, Orcs or Chaos Space Marines may move on the alien player's next turn, then discard this card. And finally, I have selected five Exarch cards. These give my leader some very powerful abilities, but they also act as health points for my leader. Every time he loses a wound, we have to discard one of these cards. When we have no cards left to discard, he dies. The cards I took were Mighty Strike, which allows me to roll one extra light weapons dice when engaged in close combat. Mental Projection, which once a turn allows my Exarch to move up to two spaces when attacked by an opponent. This can allow them to get out of harm's way. Sustained Assault, whenever the Exarch succeeds in destroying an opponent, he may immediately take another turn, moving or attacking a second time. I had to take Trance of Indestructibility. All of the Eldar Warriors and the Exarch normally have an armor class of two. This will give my Exarch an armor class of three. Finally, I took Crack Shot, which allows me to roll one extra light weapons dice when I make ranged attacks. Sorry, that was a lot of information that I have just front-loaded this video with, but I did think it was worth you knowing in advance which skills, orders, and equipment my Eldar had available to them. We can now read out our mission objective and begin turn one of the game. Mission 849-2, Sector 66, Retrieval. The remains of a lost squad of Eldar warriors have been detected by our Psy scanners in Sector 66 of the Space Hulk, codenamed Danubius. You must enter this Hulk, locate any Eldar runic weapons hidden therein, and return them to the craft world. What that means is mixed in with the enemy blip tokens, there is one token that says equipment on it. I have to find that equipment token and return it to the entry point to win. So here's what I've done. There are four sectors of the board, so I have divided all of the blips for this adventure into four piles. I have set aside one pile that will appear in this first sector of the board. I have then taken one equipment blip token and I have shuffled it into one of the other three stacks. I have then mixed up those other three stacks and associated each stack with another sector of the board. That way, I don't know where the equipment token is going to be. 
it should also be noted that this adventure makes use of reinforcement tokens. I will cover that when we need to. The Eldar go first, I select any one of my characters and move them onto the first sector. We will use one of the warriors with a shuriken catapult as a scout. Two spaces into the room, we can open the door as a free action. We have five action points remaining, and what we want to do is try to open up some doorways and get line of sight on different areas of the board, because that will minimise where the alien player can place blips. So I will move to the doorway there, you are allowed to move diagonally, so that is five movement points total, and we will open that door too. We have two action points left, we will move to there, and we will open that door. As we have nothing to shoot at, that warrior's turn is over, and now the alien player must place blips on this sector of the board. They can be placed anywhere that is out of line of sight. That's seven blips in total, all secreted behind closed doors. With that done, the Eldars can continue. We want to get as many bodies on the board as possible, but we do want to keep spread out and as much as possible out of line of sight. So we will move another catapult warrior there, one to there, one to there, we will put one there, and one to there. I'm then going to put my Exarch here. I have three heavy weapons units, they can only move three squares, so they are just going to take one step onto the board, where they are mostly still out of line of sight. So they're just going to line up there, and already I regret all of my decisions. I really should have put a screen of the catapult warriors along that doorway to make sure that my heavy weapon units would not get shot at. Never mind. It is now the alien player's turn. The first thing the alien player does is draw an event card. For the Eldar attack expansion, we have an entirely new event deck. And we have drawn Chaos Commander. Excellent tactics allow up to three Chaos Space Marines to move twice this turn. They may move once, attack and move again, or move twice before or after attacking. We now activate our blips. Unrevealed blips all have a movement of five. Let's start with this group of three down in the bottom right corner. The first one opens the door. We're going to move three spaces through the room, and then we will open that door as well. With that door open, the blip is in line of sight, so we reveal what it is. We have our first Gretchen. Gretchen have a movement of eight. As we have already moved three squares as a blip, we have five squares of movement remaining. This Gretchen, sensing it is going to die horribly, is going to try and go down as a hero. Five movement points gets it to there, and we are going to target the Shuriken Cannon. We roll two white dice. If we roll three or more successes, the Shuriken Cannon is destroyed. But we roll a big fat nothing. Sorry Gretchen, you don't get to be a hero today. Our next blip will activate. We move one space to there, that does bring us into line of sight. I actually think we may already have been in line of sight anyway looking at it, but it doesn't matter, we reveal the blip. Another Gretchen, another attempt to be a hero. We have seven movement points left. That gets us all the way to there, where we can take another shot. And again, we roll double nothings. Our third blip, to there, gets revealed. Oh, it's a Chaos Warrior, and if you remember, we got that Chaos Commander special card, which allows this warrior to move twice. Lucky for us, he just has a Bolter. With a double move, he has plenty of movement points to get into that room with all the heavy weapons units, and take another crack at that Shuriken Cannon. Regular Bolter Marines roll two white dice. And we roll a single hit. Again, that's not good enough. I guess we better just keep piling the pressure on. We will move the blips in the top right. As soon as we open that door, the one at the top becomes visible to the Exarch. It's another Gretchen. And this guy's just going to move into the corridor and take a shot at the closest catapult. Two white dice needing three successes. And again, we roll nothing. Our next blip. One space into the corridor. It's an orc. For a laugh, let's have this orc charge into combat. Things are getting orky, it's time to get out the orc dice tray. Now melee combat doesn't work in the same way as ranged combat, it's an opposed dice roll, and armour doesn't factor into anything, so first our orc rolls two white dice. Rolling two successes, that's pretty good. Now our Eldar rolls three white dice. They need at least two successes. 
and they get no successes. We take away the lowest score from the highest score and that is the number of wounds inflicted on the loser. So in this case, our Eldar warrior receives two wounds and is killed. Note that the orc only rolled two successes when attacking. If he had been shooting, then he would not have killed the Eldar. Well, that's not good for the Eldar, but we have to continue. We have two more blips to reveal. We open the door and we will have the closest blip advance one space. That's not quite in line of sight, so it advances one more. And now we can reveal it. Just another Gretchen. We have six movement points remaining, so we will go six to there and we will shoot the Eldar in the bottom right corner. Two white dice looking for three successes. Only one. Our last blip. To there. Yet another Gretchen. We've been very lucky with the number of Gretchen that have turned up here. Again, we have six movement points remaining. And again, we will shoot at the catapult in the bottom right. And again, we get nothing. Still, we have got five points for killing that first Eldar warrior, and the Eldar player has lost five points. The last thing to do is bring on reinforcements. We are allowed to bring in up to six reinforcement tokens, and there are two different areas marked on the map where they can arrive. The way I'm going to handle reinforcements is first all of the green skin reinforcements will arrive, then all of the Chaos Warrior reinforcements will arrive, and finally any androids will arrive. So on the far left of the board we are going to spawn three green skin reinforcements. I randomly pick them from the big stack of tokens, and we have got one Orc and two Gretchen. They will appear here. I am also allowed to spawn reinforcements all the way over there in the top right corner of the board, so I am going to spawn another three green skin tokens there. And this time it's a Gretchen and two Orcs. There they are, all the way over there. They can activate next turn. It's a new turn for the Eldar, we need to start cleaning house. And I think there is no better way to do that than by shooting with our Shuriken Cannon. We can fire up to three times with this Shuriken Cannon, rolling a red and white dice with each attack. Oh, and just in case you are losing track of who's who, this guy here, he's the Shuriken Cannon. He's going to take his first shot at the Chaos Marine. He requires three successes to kill it. He rolls one, which is no good. So he's gonna shoot it again. And this time he rolls a three that is good enough and the Chaos Marine is killed. Five points to Team Eldar. We actually have one shot left, so we are going to shoot at the closest Gretchen. We roll a one. Gretchen have an armor class of zero, so we do indeed kill that Gretchen as well. Two more points for us. Now it's kicking off. We are going to move with the Shuriken Cannon as well. We will move ready to explore another board sector next turn. Like so. I think our Exarch is going to move next, and we will see what the Exarch can do. First of all, we are going to shoot at the Gretchen directly behind us. We roll three white dice. Two successes kills the Gretchen. Now we're starting to make bank. Because we destroyed an enemy, we immediately get to activate our sustained assault ability, which allows us to take a free shot. We will take that at the orc we can see from here. Unfortunately, we rolled three zeros. Never mind, we still get another attack because when we are shooting, we get to fire twice per turn as standard anyway. So let's try and shoot him again. Unfortunately, another three zeros. Never mind, we are going to move our Exarch. We're going to start advancing north. We have five Catapult Eldar left. Let's start by activating the one on the far left. Seven movement points will get him to there. He can shoot at the Gretchen. Now remember, we have explosive shuriken shots and runes of guidance, so we are rolling three white dice and we get to re-roll one of the dice if we miss. However, we did roll a one, so we have killed the Gretchen. And remember, that is two points for each kill. Okay, let's have another go at trying to kill this orc. We will move one of our catapults to there and we will shoot with three white dice. That's a complete flub, but we do get a re-roll for our runes of guidance. And it's another zero. What is wrong with these dice? Okay, it's time to bring out the heavy guns then. I'm going to use my LAS cannon to try and shoot this orc. We're going to move up a bit, just to there, and we are going to use concentrated fire. That means instead of shooting twice, we are only going to shoot once, but we are going to roll two red dice instead of one red dice. And again, it's double zero. This has been a disastrous turn of shooting, 
but we will press on. We still have three catapults to shoot. This one moves to there and shoots with three white dice. Rolling two successes, that is enough to bypass the orc's armor of one. We have finally shot down this orc, but at what cost? We used nearly all of our forces to bring him down and he took out one of our Eldars as well. All for three lousy points. Two catapults left, two Gretchen. We'll move over there into the corner, three white dice. Two successes, that is a kill. Again with the two points. One more to go. We'll just move to there and shoot again. One success. Fortunately, that is enough. Gretchen have an armor class of zero. Two more points and we have cleared the board. We still have to move our missile launcher. He has nothing to shoot at. He can only move three squares, so there's not a lot he can do. We'll just get him to there. At the start of the alien player's turn, we draw an event card. It's a chaos fog. No last cannons will work until the beginning of the alien player's next turn. Fair enough, I only have one last cannon and it failed to do anything of any value anyway. The alien player doesn't have any blips to activate, but does have some reinforcements on the board, so we will activate those. Here comes the mob. And while I've got the camera pointed this way, we will spawn three reinforcements on that zone as well. Two more Gretchen, one more Orc. Meanwhile, all the way over there in the snowy north, there's a WAH building. And again, we will pull three reinforcement tokens. Another Orc and another two Gretchen. And that wraps up that turn. No killing for the alien player this time. The slowness of my heavy weapons units is a concern because those Orc to the left are going to catch up with them very quickly. So I think we are going to reevaluate our position. We are going to head to the left. First of all, we will send in one of our warriors with a Shuriken catapult as a scout. Six movement points gets him next to the door so he can open that door. He has one more movement point, he can move to the other door and open that one too. He is a very brave little Eldar because he is about to face the full force of the Wa. But as he is the first Eldar in the new board sector, we now have to populate our blips. As before, we can place these blips anywhere on the board as long as they are out of line of sight to the Eldar. So we're going to do something a little bit like that. We are now going to move the rest of the squad en masse to position ourselves accordingly so that we can face this new challenge. Like so. And yes, I have made a shield wall of Eldar warriors. It's for the greater good. It's a new turn for the alien player, that means a new alien event card. We have redeploy. You may place up to three blip tokens onto a board that has already been scanned. These tokens may be taken from elsewhere on the board. The normal rules apply as to where these tokens may be placed. That is awesome. Not for the Eldar though. Naturally, I'm going to take some of the blips that we have on this board sector and we are going to place them behind the Eldar, just over there. And before we find out how horrific that has been for the Eldar player, we are going to activate all of our Gretchen and Orc that are already on the board. Let's kill some space elves. Our first sneaky Gretchen will move to there and shoot with two white dice. One success, not good enough. Luckily, we have more Gretchen. Again, attacking with two white dice. Not rolling well with these dice at all today. We have an Orc, the Orc is going to advance up. It could get into close combat, but I don't know what the other blips are going to be and I'd like to leave a space for them to get involved as well. So we're just going to hang back and shoot with the Orc. So he just goes to there and rolls two white dice. And again, a big fat nothing. We have more Orky reinforcements. He gets to there, that Gretchen gets to there, and that Gretchen gets to there. Right, let's see what our redeployment did. Have we managed to ambush the Eldar with something powerful? That blip steps out of cover and is revealed. And it is an Orc. This could be bad news for the Eldar. That Orc has five movement points remaining, and that is enough to get into base contact with the Laz Cannon. If you remember, Eldar warriors with light weapons will roll three white dice in close combat. However, Eldar warriors with heavy weapons only roll two white dice. So this Orc is on an even footing and has a good chance of killing this Laz Cannon. So we shall go to there and we will roll our two white dice. And again, we roll double zeros. The Eldar retaliates, also rolling two white dice. And again, rolls nothing. It's a standoff. Let's get another blip into the action. 
When that blip moves to there, it is in line of sight. It is just a Gretchen. So we will back off one space and then we will shoot at the last cannon. Two white dice. We need three successes. Based on my rolling so far, not going to happen. Two. We have one more blip in this little ambush. Hopefully it's something really good. Three movement points to there. And it's another orc. Another chance to take on the last cannon in hand-to-hand -hand combat. We roll our two white dice. And it's a double zero. The Eldar responds. And it's a double zero. What is going on? Never mind, we have four more blips. So we activate one of those and open the door. As soon as we do that, two of them are in line of sight. We have a Gretchen and a Chaos Warrior. So our Gretchen moves to there and shoots at the Eldar with two white dice. And gets two successes. That's better than most have managed, but it's still not enough to kill anything. Our Chaos Warrior is going to do the same thing from there. And that's nothing. But after those enemies moved, there was another blip that came into line of sight. It's a Gretchen. Let's see if he can do any better. Three successes will do it. Two again. Let's activate our last blip. What have we got? Just another Gretchen. I was kind of hoping for a missile launcher. We will just shoot from there. Two white dice. One success. Nothing doing. Meanwhile, all these lads slowly advance towards the action. It is now the reinforcement phase. However, in my reserve, I only have one Orc miniature and three Gretchen miniatures. I know that if I draw six green reinforcement tokens, I am not going to have the necessary miniatures to actually put those reinforcements into play. For that reason, I am not going to deploy any reinforcement tokens in that top right corner. However, I do think I will roll out some big guns down in the bottom left corner. I am going to place two androids just to spice things up a bit. When you are playing games like this solo, there are things you can do to surprise yourself, like mixing up the blip tokens and things like that. However, sometimes you just have to put yourself in the mindset of the alien player. What would they do? I think round right about now, I would start dropping androids. And so we shall. And now it is the Eldar's turn. And we will start with our Exarch leading by example. We have a movement of seven spaces. That is just enough to get into base contact. Chaos Marines have chunky armor. However, that armor counts for nothing in close combat. And our Exarch is a close combat specialist. He will be rolling four white dice to the Chaos Marines two white dice. And we roll four zeros. We don't even get a re-roll. And now the Chaos Marine retaliates. We could actually start losing life points here. This is bad. <laughs> and the Chaos Marine rolls two zeros as well, so it is a standoff, but our Exarch is left looking very foolish indeed. Right, I guess our Shuriken Catapults will come in and try and help the Exarch from getting swarmed. We will put one there in the corner, he shoots with three white dice, he gets a re-roll as well. Re-roll isn't necessary, the Gretchen dies. Two more points for us. Our second catapult will move into the room as well, just to there, and he will also roll three white dice to attack a Gretchen. Two successes, that's another kill. And of course, another two points. Let's advance up another catapult. He's going there, he's also going to target a Gretchen. That's four successes. I wish I had targeted the Marine because that would have killed it. Really racking up the points now though. Right, let's move our missile launcher. And from there, we do have line of sight to the empty space next to the Orc and the two Gretchen, which means I can plant a missile on that space. The way the missile launcher works is you roll two red dice. The target square is hit for the total of the two red dice. The surrounding squares are all hit for the value of the highest dice. I roll a zero and a two, which means the two Gretchen and the Orc are all hit with a strength two blast, which kills them all. That's some good points. Next, we have the Shuriken Catapult in the bottom right corner. He is going to shoot at the Orc directly in front of him. Rolling all nothing, so he's going to run away. Next up, we have the Laz Cannon. He is going to move three spaces, turn around and try and kill these Orcs. That's a three. That instantly kills them both. That's another six points and the Eldar are really starting to find their feet now. 
Okay, I have one catapult left. He's going to advance up the corridor and take a little shot at the sneaky Gretchen that is just peering around the corner in the lower left. Three white dice with a reroll. Three successes, that's a kill. And of course, two more points. And I suppose my shuriken cannon can take up a rear guard action. He's going to move two spaces just to there and he is going to take three shots on the Gretchen. And the first shot does the deed. Two more points and things are starting to look grim for the alien player. But speaking of the alien player, it is now the alien player's turn. We start by drawing an alien event. Uh oh, we've got gene stealers. Place two gene stealers anywhere on the board. They may attack and move as normal this turn. We will put one there and we will put one there. And I think we'll save those attacks for last. First of all, we activate our Chaos Marine. He has a movement of six squares. That is just enough to do this. He is going to engage the Laz Cannon in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Double zeros. The Laz Cannon retaliates and gets a success, so the Chaos Marine dies. Well, that was rubbish. Five more points for the Eldar. Next, we will activate our Gretchen. He's just going to move to there and shoot at the Eldar with two white dice. That's three. That's three successes. That is a kill. The Gretchen has taken a lucky shot and popped that Eldar in the head. That is five more points for the alien player and a deduction of five points from the Eldar. Let's activate our little orc. He's going to stop there and he is going to shoot at the Laz Cannon. Double zeros. We're back to usual. I have two androids. They move four squares each. Three to the door and we open it and one more space just to get out of line of sight. The other android will follow. It's time to activate the Gene Stealers. Gene Stealers roll two red dice in hand-to-hand -hand combat, while these Eldars with heavy weapons will only roll two white dice. First, we will attack the Missile Launcher. That's two successes. The Missile Launcher rolls. Two successes, unbelievable. That Gene Stealer can now move. It has a movement of eight squares. It is going to move out of the way, just to there. Now the other Gene Stealer attacks the Shuriken Cannon. Two successes again. And this time the Eldar rolls zeros, and that means that Eldar is killed. However, we have this card, Warlock's Warning. You may use this card to allow one Eldar Warrior to avoid taking any damage following one attack. Discard this card after use. And so, again, the Gene Stealers fail to cause any damage. This Gene Stealer is now also going to duck out of the line of sight. Of course, we also have Orcs at the top of the board. They will all advance. After moving all of those units, one sneaky Gretchen is in line of sight to the Laz Cannon, so we will attack that. And we have rolled a three. That is another kill for another Gretchen. I can't kill things with Gene Stealers, I can't kill things with Marines, but my Gretchen are doing all the heavy lifting. And this time, there is no special get out of jail free card that we can play. Our Eldar Laz Cannon unit has been destroyed. That is 10 points for the Alien player, minus 10 points for the Eldar player. That is a hefty 20 point swing. That is awesome for the Alien player. And now we have lost a lot of green skins from the board, we can also do some reinforcements. We will put three green skins in the top right corner, two orcs and a Gretchen, and of course we will also spawn three reinforcements in the bottom left. What's it going to be? Two more Gretchen and an orc. It is now the Eldar's turn to activate. We are going to play our order card Psychic Attack. Your squad may launch a mental assault against the forces of chaos. No Gretchen, orcs or chaos space marines may move on the alien player's next turn. This is just going to stop all of those Orcs and Gretchen that are slowly working their way down the board from coming around the corner and catching up with us. And we are going to start by activating our Exarch. He is going to sneak around the corner and see if he can take out at least one of these androids. Androids are scary. So it's a movement of four to there and we are going to target the android on the right. Normally we would roll two white dice for this, but we have the crack shot ability, which allows us to roll an additional white dice. And also because we are using this pistol, we can fire twice. Androids have an armor class of two, so we are looking for three successes. Three zeros isn't going to cut it. Second attack. Two, not quite good enough. 
Unfortunately, I don't have any rerolls, so that is the end of the Exarch's turn. Never mind, we are going to continue clearing house. Let's activate our missile launcher. Three spaces to there, and he is going to shoot that orc. Two red dice. We should be able to obliterate this. What is going on? Starting to feel like things are going to take a turn for the worse for the Eldar. Still, we will press on. We're going to activate our Shuriken Cannon. We move one space to get a clear line of sight on the Gene Stealer and also the Gretchen in the corridor. And we're just going to keep pumping shots into the Gene Stealer until it dies. We get to shoot up to three times. Each shot uses a red dice and a white dice. And because we have Runes of Guidance on our Shuriken Cannon, we can reroll one dice with each attack. Shot one, requiring four successes. That's not going to do it. Shot two. Just the one. I can re-roll the red. If I get a three, then I have killed the Gene Stealer. And there is the three. That kills the Gene Stealer. That is massive. We have one shot left. We aim at the Gretchen. Two successes. Another kill. Note that we get two points for killing the Gretchen. We get no points for killing the Gene Stealer because it's spawned from an event card. All I have left now are my catapults. So our first one is going to go into that corner and he is going to shoot the orc. There is nothing stopping me from shooting things that are adjacent. Triple zeros, get in. Luckily, I do get a reroll with these. Naturally, it's another zero. Okay, our second catapult is going to move around the orc and try and get rid of that Gretchen. Three white dice with a reroll. One success, one kill. And of course, another two points. We have two more catapults. One is going to move into the corridor to attack the orc. He will shoot from there. And he rolls four successes. That's a massive kill. Three more points. I have one catapult left, and he has just enough movement points to get into the room with the androids, but I don't think that's a good idea. So instead, we're going to hide in the corner. We will be brave next turn. It is now time for the alien player to activate. As you will recall, the Eldar played Psychic Attack, so none of the Orcs or Gretchen on the board can move this turn. They could shoot if they had line of sight, but they don't. Let's draw an event card. <laughs> and the event card we have drawn is Psychic Attack. The Craft World sends a massive Psychic Attack onto the Space Hulk. All Gretchen and Orcs are affected and may not move or fire on this turn. I guess the powers that be are not in direct communication with each other because nobody let them know that we have already made a psychic attack ourselves. So this card is a bit of a waste. It is not going to benefit the Eldar at all. However, because Orcs and Gretchen are not going to activate this turn, there isn't a lot for the alien player to do. We just have one Gene Stealer and two androids. The two androids both have line of sight to the Exarch. However, I know the Exarch has an ability that will allow him to move two spaces if he is targeted. That will allow him to duck out of line of sight and we would waste our attack. So instead, our androids are going to pile into the corridor and try and take down some of the other Eldar warriors. The first android will move there. He shoots with three white dice. And rolls a two. That's not quite good enough. Our second android activates and again shoots with three white dice. Absolutely nothing. Finally, we can activate our Gene Stealer. Let's hope it does a little better. It is of course going to scurry down the board and attack the Shuriken Cannon. It rolls two red dice to attack. Two successes. Our Eldar retaliates and gets nothing. And this time the Gene Stealer does manage to get a kill things really are starting to take a turn for the worse. However, that is the end of our turn. We only have two spaces on the board where we can bring in reinforcements. We may as well bring in a green skin at each. Down in the bottom left, we get a Gretchen. And in the top right, we get a Gretchen. It is now time for the Eldar to activate. To begin, we will move our missile launcher along the corridor and try to take out one of these pesky androids. We roll two red dice and we only get two successes. It's just not good enough. I think our Eldar may need to adopt a run and gun technique here because we are in a spot of trouble. First, we will activate the catapult closest to the androids. We will take a shot and then run. We have rolled one success. We do get a reroll, but unfortunately it's not good enough. So we're going to back off up to there. Our next catapult will take a shot. 
That's two successes and we get the reroll. But it's a zero. Even a one would have been enough there. Let's back off. Our other catapults are going to redeploy, ready to move into the next sector. This one moves three to the door and opens it, and then stands there ready. Our next catapult is going to try and take down an android. Three dice with a reroll. Zero, zero, zero. Even with the reroll, it's not going to happen. And then I guess I just move my Exarch up to there, ready to move into that zone next turn. Things really are starting to look bad. Worse yet, it is now the alien player's turn. All of the Orc and Gretchen can activate, and we get to draw an event card. The event we have drawn is Alien Teleporter. Any two alien miniatures on the board may be swapped over. There's not a lot of really good plays we can do with that, but I may as well take an Orc from the top right of the board and swap it with a Gretchen from the lower left. And now we can begin our turn. Our first android is going to close the gap on the missile launcher and attack in hand-to-hand. -hand. It rolls two red dice. One success. <laughs> and the missile launcher rolls four successes in retaliation, easily defeating the android. Those are the risks you take with close combat. Even when you have the advantage, sometimes things just don't go your way. The android goes down, and that is ten more points for the Eldar. The other android isn't able to get into base contact with the missile launcher because androids only move four spaces, so we are going to stay where we are and shoot at the catapult instead. And we have rolled three successes. We have also smashed a door. That is another dead Eldar. I'm starting to think the Eldar may not pull through today. We have a Gene Stealer to activate. And unfortunately for the missile launcher, Gene Stealers move eight squares. Just enough. It attacks with two red dice. Scoring three. There is very little chance that the missile launcher can survive this. And it does not. Unfortunately, we have lost our last heavy weapon. That is another 20 point swing in the scores. Things look very grim indeed. We have some Orc and Gretchen in the bottom corner to activate. This Orc can get into firing range of the catapult. Two successes, not enough. The next Orc advances, and it can also take a shot. And that is three. That is another dead Eldar. Things really have taken a terrible turn now. We are down to just two catapults and our Exarch. This is what happens when you roll really badly, really consistently. The Eldar did not capitalize on their numbers at the start of the game. They rolled far too many zeros. Things did not go their way. It allowed the enemy forces to build up and now we are being swarmed. And it still isn't over. That Gretchen moves eight squares and will shoot at the catapult. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. I don't know what to say at this point. That's another kill for a Gretchen. That's three kills from Gretchen. The casualties the Eldar have taken from the weakest enemies is atrocious. This is a terrible day for the Craft Worlds. Our last Gretchen advances. We will then need to activate all the green skins in the top right quarter. Before we do, I am going to drop some more reinforcements in the lower left. We only have two green reinforcements left, so I am going to spawn two green and one blue. The green token's a Gretchen, and our blue token is a Chaos Marine with a missile launcher. As if things couldn't get any worse. Okay, we are going to activate all of the green skins in the top corner. They've been itching for a fight, and they've just realized they're going the wrong way. Change of plans, boys. Looks like Eldar's back on the menu. So they're all redeployed, and you know what? I may as well chuck three blue reinforcement tokens in that top right corner. Three regular Chaos Marines. Well, that went splendidly. Well, the Eldar begin a new turn. We are going to run into this sector, open as many doors as we can, and then probably die horribly. Four movement points to the door, and we open it. And then we will move out into the corridor. We will open that door. That's going to limit where the new blips can be placed. And we may as well go for the Gretchen, because it is the easiest kill. And we get three zeros. We do get a reroll, though. And it's another zero. There really is very little you can do when the dice hate you that much. Do bear in mind, Gretchen have an armor class of zero, which means a result of a one or a two is enough to kill them. Each of those dice I just rolled has a 33% chance of killing that Gretchen. I rolled four dice. 
but as an Eldar has ended their activation on a previously unexplored sector of the board, we have to place some blips. We will place them like so. And now the Exarch will activate. At this point we really are in a run and gun situation. We are deep behind enemy lines. There are far too many enemies on the board for us to take down. We need to keep exploring the blip tokens, see if we can find the equipment and then make a run for it. So we're going to move up to this closed door. To there, that's four movement points. We will open that door and we can reveal the two blips we can see. We have revealed a Chaos Marine and a Chaos Marine Commander. Things have actually worked out okay for us there because there are no Chaos Marine miniatures. We have called in so many Marine reinforcements, we do not have a miniature left for this blip. So that blip is just discarded. Unfortunately, we do have a Chaos Commander. Our best chance of dealing with this Chaos Commander is in close combat, but before we engage in close combat, I want to sneak around the back of him and see what that other blip is. So we move to there. And the other blip is a Chaos Marine with a missile launcher. Again, this works in our favor. We already have a Chaos Marine with a missile launcher on the board. There are no more miniatures we can play, so that blip is discarded. Okay, I guess we are going to attack this Chaos Commander. We roll four white dice in combat, the Chaos Commander rolls two. And we have rolled one success. That's appalling. The Chaos Commander rolls two dice, and rolls double zero. So even though we rolled incredibly badly, we have inflicted a single wound on the commander and that is enough to remove him from the game. That's a huge success for the Exarch who has been having what can only be described as a bit of a shocker. One dead commander means 10 more points for us. It's the alien player's turn. We draw an event card and it's a psychic sending. The craft ward transmits a psychic boost to back up the squad. The Exarch may pick up one extra command card. We are going to take Warlock's Gaze. One Eldar warrior may use this card once to move twice and attack twice. He may roll one extra light weapons die in any attack. Discard this card after use. Let's start by activating the blips that are behind that door. And our first blip moves into the corridor. What have we got? That is the equipment token. That is what we came here for. Now I just need to get to it, collect it, and get out. Sure, sounds easy. Let's move the rest of the blips. What have we got? That is a Gretchen. The best thing he can do is stand in front of the equipment and try and block access to it. He rolls two white dice to attack the catapult. And gets nothing. Next blip moves to there and reveals. It's an orc. And this orc, being an orc, is going to charge into hand-to-hand -hand combat. Get stuck in with your choppers, lads. Two successes. The Eldar retaliates with three white dice. And only rolls one success. That means the orc does stab that Eldar in the back. The Exarch is alone. We still have one more blip to activate. It moves to there and reveals. And it's another orc. I'm not sure I've got any orcs left to put on the board. Oh no, lucky me, there was just one more in the box. It's moved four spaces to get to where it is. It has two spaces left to move. Let's go and say hello to the Exarch. And the Orc would attack, but the Exarch has an ability that allows him to dodge two spaces to get out of danger. He can only use it once per turn though, but we are actually going to use it to move back into the corridor, away from the flailing chopper of the Orc and closer to that equipment token we need. Now we just have to survive the green tide. The next orc will activate. He's sneaking in there and attacking with two white dice. Oh my goodness, he's rolled double twos. That is the best result he could have got. Our Exarch rolls four dice. We need four to avoid damage, five to win. And that's all zeros. We have just taken four points of damage. We have to discard four of our special Exarch cards. That means we have lost most of our special abilities. Okay, so we're going to discard four cards. We will discard everything except for Trance of Indestructibility, which gives us an armor class of three. Let's activate some Gretchen. That one moves to there and shoots. It needs to roll double twos to hit. Halfway there. The next Gretchen completely misses. We have a whole heap of orcs ready to spill around the doorway up in the top left corner. 
and that one just happens to have enough range to get into close combat. Rolling a single success. Unfortunately, our Exarch now only rolls three white dice because we lost our ability that allowed us to roll the extra white dice, even though it didn't help in the slightest. And we roll two successes, so we have actually killed that orc. Three more points, but that's some small consolation. The greenskins keep on coming. This one shoots with two white dice, needing four. Nope. The rest all advance as they can. There are so many of them. We also have some Chaos Warriors right up just out of camera shot. Those advance six spaces, and they are still just a bit out of shot. And then we have all this stuff, this whole mess of nonsense in the lower right corner. I think we're just going to move up a little bit and get into a position where we can just cause maximum trouble once the Exarch comes back this way. And hey, we've still got reinforcements we can play. What reinforcements do we have? We have two androids and a Chaos Commander. Let's bring them all into play. Now we're playing on hard mode. It's the Eldar's turn, we have very little we can do. We are running the gauntlet, whatever happens. Let's go and pick up the equipment just so we can say that we actually found it. At least maybe we will be remembered in the histories of the Craft Wars as the Eldar who at least found something. That's four movement points to there. We are now carrying the equipment. We have three more movement points. That will get us to there. We are going to shoot the orc directly in front of us. We roll two white dice. That is not enough to kill it, but we do get a second shot. And that is not enough to kill it either. At this point, we should not be surprised. It's the alien player's turn, we draw an alien event. And we have drawn a laser defense network. You may attack any block of four corridor squares with two heavy weapons dice as if you were firing a LAS cannon. Oh dear. We are going to concentrate all of this fire onto the Eldar Exarch and we will be rolling two red dice. And we get a big fat double nothing. I guess something had to go the Eldar's way eventually. However, the only thing coming the Exarch's way now is a great big tide of horrible green death. First, we will attack with some orc in close combat. This one, two white dice. <laughs> that's, that's double two again. It is unbelievable how many dice rolls have turned up like that for the alien player. Our Exarch gets three dice to defend. This could be game over. And indeed, it is. We block two of the incoming damage, two damage still gets through, you have to discard one card for each damage you take, we only have one card left and that means we die. It's game over, Eldar lose, and they lose spectacularly. Well there we go, that was something of a baptism of fire for our first playthrough of Eldar Attack. I'm sure I made more than a few tactical mistakes, but for the most part, I think my failure came down to just horrific dice rolling. I guess I dithered a bit too long in the first board sector. I probably should have moved a little bit quicker because I gave the aliens too much time to gather their reinforcements. And I think maybe I didn't take all of the best equipment. Giving the runes of guidance to a single shuriken cannon probably wasn't the best idea because once that cannon was gone, that equipment card was wasted for the rest of the game. I probably should have selected something that would be applicable to more of my units. However, having said that, I did give all of my shuriken catapults exploding shurikens and runes of guidance, which meant they were rolling three dice with a reroll. They really should have been doing much better with their firing. Also, all of those Eldar with the shuriken catapults were rolling three white dice in hand-to-hand -hand combat, yet they really, really struggled. Ultimately, regardless of the tactics I used, the equipment I took, whether I made right or wrong decisions, sometimes there's just nothing you can do about it. And apparently, dice still hate me, even when I'm playing both sides. Nevertheless, we do have to tot up our points. The Eldar did incredibly poorly, they killed 76 points worth of aliens. Conversely, the alien player did incredibly well. They killed six Eldar with shuriken catapults, worth 30 points. They killed three Eldar with heavy weapons, worth another 30 points. And they killed the Exarch, which is worth 10 points. That is a total of 70 points. However, the way the scoring works, the total score for killing those Eldar also has to come off of the Eldar score. That leaves the Eldar on 6 points and the Alien player on 70. However, it gets worse. 
because the Eldar failed to achieve their primary objective of retrieving the equipment and getting it back home, the alien player scores an additional 30 points. That takes their total up to 100. So the grand total, the final score, is 100 points to 6. And if we look at the back of the mission books, we can find out exactly what that means. For the alien player, 81 points or more is a heroic performance. We are awarded three marks of chaos, and because we won the game, we are automatically promoted one rank. If we were playing a campaign, that is a really good head start. For the Eldar, 25 points or less means you have disappointed your ancestors and disgraced yourself. <laughs> you must abandon the path of the warrior and commit yourself to a less demanding path. <laughs> In your next game, you must start off with a new Avenger Exarch. So if we were playing the campaign and we had progressed through several stages, this would reset us back to the beginning. We have disgraced ourselves. This has been a disaster. But while it has been a disaster for the Eldar, hopefully it has not been a disaster for those of you watching. I hope this has been an entertaining experience. I have certainly enjoyed playing, even though it was at times quite frustrating to see all those zeros turning up on the dice. And that is it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.